Take your switch and identify the common, normally open, and normally closed ports. There are many circuit diagrams on how to wire a rapid strike, however this is my way of explaining where you will need to solder the wires. I've also linked a wiring diagram sourced from Blastertech AU and the process for both explanations is exactly the same. I will be using three different markers where red will represent the positive wire, black will represent the negative wire, and blue will represent any feeds. First, a wire will go from the positive on the XT60 to the common on the rev trigger switch, then the normally open will go to the positive on the flywheels. This switches the flywheels on and off. To supply power to the main trigger and to the pusher motor, a blue wire will go from the normally open on the rev trigger switch to the normally open on the main trigger switch and continue to the normally closed on the pusher return switch. Then take a red wire from the common on the main trigger to the pusher motor. In order to complete the pusher's circuit, a black wire will go from the pusher motor to the normally open of the pusher return switch and continue to the negative on the flywheels. Then, connect a wire from the common of the pusher return switch to the normally closed on the trigger switch. Finally, to complete the circuit, the negative of the flywheels will go back to the negative on the XT60. With this setup, the flywheels must be turned on in order for the blaster to operate, thus stopping any accidental jams caused by supplying power to the main trigger into stationary flywheels. In a three-switch system, this allows the pusher arm to fully retract to its original position. This setup is referred to as live center wiring, and the advantages of live center wiring allows for proper cycle control of the rapid strike, such as single shots and three round bursts. Feel free to pause or rewatch this segment until you are sure of where to solder the wires. Following our guide, let's start wiring up. Measure and cut the appropriate wires to where they will eventually be connected together. A good practice is to measure the wire and add an extra inch of wire before soldering. Remember, you can always add and trim later. To ensure a good electrical connection, we're going to tin the terminals. This little tub is called flux, and the purpose of it is to ensure that the solder liquefies when heated. Before I solder the terminals, I add a small dab of flux onto them and then I go ahead and melt the solder onto the terminals. We need to tin the wire as well. Place a dab of solder onto the iron and place the iron against the wire to heat it up and melt the solder onto the wire. Once tinned, simply remelt the solder and join the wires to their respective terminals. You'll notice that you've done a good electrical connection as the joints should look nice and shiny. If the joint looks frosted or crystallized, it's a bad connection. If this happens, just reheat and try again. Solder the wires to the pusher motor and connect the wires to their respective terminals. The black wire will go to the normally open on the pusher switch, and the red wire will go to the common on the main trigger switch. I've also added heat shrink on the joints to prevent from any accidental shorts. Let's attach the LiPo plug. Tin the appropriate wires and terminals as normal, and ensure to fill up the terminal with solder. Then, add a small tube of heat shrink onto the wire, sliding up as far as possible away from the area that will be soldered. Then solder the wires to their terminals. Ensure you match red to positive and black to negative to prevent confusion. On an XT60, the curved side is your negative and the straight side is your positive. 
Once cooled, slide the heat shrink back onto the soldered terminals and use a heat gun, lighter or the soldering iron to shrink it. Finally, solder the wires to the flywheels and ensure that the flywheels are spinning the correct way. So this is the finished rapid strike in its entirety. I've already wired up the switch plate and it's now running off three Rhino motors. And I've also taken out the stock flywheel cage and the stock flywheels and replaced them with an OFP cage with worker wheels. If you want to see how I did that, check the link in the description below. And this blaster is now hooked up on four AA batteries for testing. Make sure that when testing the blaster, always use AA batteries because if you use a LiPo, your blaster will catch fire and that's not good. So here goes the testing. The flywheels work and yep, I'm happy with that. Okay, so now that's all, all that's left to do is just put everything back and seal up the blaster and then I'll show you a firing test. And there you have it, the rapid strike's now fully overhauled and oh my goodness it is a firing monster. Wow! Okay, aside from adding the new switch plate, I've also added an OFP flywheel cage and two worker wheels in the front. And I've also added an extended pusher from Worker, so this thing is fully overhauled and I'm very happy with how the project turned out. Other than that, I've, all, I've kept the motors the same. It is still running off three Rhino motors and it is all hooked up to a 1000 milliamp hour 3S LiPo. So right now I'm just going to show you a firing test. So here we go. As you can see, I can easily control my shots from single fire to burst fire to full auto. Even though I've only shot like two darts at once, I can still control it, which is very, very nice. And yeah, overall I'm very happy with how the project turned out. And yeah, I've also had a chance to put this up on my chronograph and it is getting around 100 to 115 FPS. So, I'm very happy with how it's performing. So that concludes the end of the video. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. It really helps. And if you're new to my channel and want to see more on Red Ninja Productions, subscribe and join the Ninja Academy. But until next time, see you guys later. Bye.